Without a doubt, Aerosmith has been one of the biggest rock bands of the past 50 years. But over their storied career, they've also butted heads with bands they've toured with. That's what we're going to explore in today's video. The Black Crows toured with Aerosmith on their first record, who were experiencing a career resurgence. As part of the Pump Tour, the Black Crows opened up a series of shows for the band, but the tour ran into some issues early on, as Chris Robinson stated here. You get to the first gig, and of course, the most career-oriented minded group in the history of music, we like opened the show with a new song we had just written or something. And if I remember correctly, I was like crawling around on the stage with a big knife, stabbing it into the stage. I don't know what we were doing. But I guess uh, that the drummer for Aerosmith um, watched the opening of our set and immediately went back and, and uh, contacted their management and had us fired. Uh, cooler heads prevailed and, and we finished the tour. And that wasn't the only issue as frontman Chris Robinson was disappointed to learn that Aerosmith frontman Steven Tyler, who was one of his heroes growing up, used backing tapes during live shows. Robinson would tell Rolling Stone, if you're an entertainer and you take it seriously, you entertain with your natural abilities. You go on stage and you take a chance like everyone else. People say to us, man, I heard some bad notes in your set tonight. Well, F and A, right, you heard some bad notes. You saw a real band tonight, didn't you? His brother Rich would defend Chris telling Rolling Stone, all Chris said is he's disappointed because his great bands he's loved all his life were made to resort to using tapes in concert. And it bums him out because he feels they're better than that. It didn't come off sounding that way, but it disappointed him and made him look at the world and think, man, things are effed up. The music industry is just for shit. But things would eventually be patched up over the years when Chris revealed he had run into guitarist Joe Perry in Boston in the mid 2010s when they were staying at the same hotel. Robinson would end up playing on Perry's solo record at the time, Switzerland Manifesto. In 1993, as part of Aerosmith's Get a Grip tour, the heavy metal band Megadeth was an opening act. Despite the strange pairing, Megadeth's management thought it would be a great idea to tour with Aerosmith since Megadeth's members were trying to stay sober and the members of Aerosmith have been sober for quite a long time. Megadeth would be Aerosmith's first tour opener as part of the tour in June of 1993. The plan was for Megadeth to open 25 shows for Aerosmith, but things quickly unraveled after only a handful of dates. Megadeth bassist David Elfson would claim that the band was unhappy with the fact that they never got a proper sound check or even a special backdrop or a proper stage space during their live shows. Elfson and leader Dave Mustaine felt that they had already paid their dues and weren't some unknown or up and coming band that Aerosmith would typically take on the road with them. Mustaine would end up mouthing off about Aerosmith in the press and the band would be fired from the tour, as MTV reported here. In other Aerosmith news, the veteran band has unceremoniously dropped Megadeth as the opening act on its U.S. tour after only three shows. The split occurred after a concert in Houston last Sunday, when Aerosmith singer Steven Tyler said to Megadeth frontman Dave Mustaine, we'd like to help you out, which way did you come in? Says Aerosmith guitarist Joe Perry, Dave Mustaine just wasn't happy and we don't want to tour with anyone who isn't having a good time. A Megadeth press release says the band left the Aerosmith tour by mutual agreement because of artistic restrictions and that the group wasn't being perceived as the multi-platinum unit that it is. Mustaine was considerably more forthright during an appearance on Houston radio station KEGL on Sunday night when, among many other things, he said of Aerosmith, quote, We don't mind if they headline because this is their last hurrah. Soon they'll be dead. Megadeth has been replaced for the rest of the Aerosmith tour by Jackal. Megadeth reportedly learned about their firing ahead of a planned show in Lubbock, Texas, when they visited a restaurant where a waitress informed them that she had heard that the band Jackal would be opening for Aerosmith instead of Megadeth. In the mid-70s, Aerosmith would tour with Kiss, but the tour left a sour taste in both bands' mouths. Aerosmith frontman Steven Tyler would reveal during an interview with WHPT Tampa, I remember when we went out with Kiss in 1976 or something, one of our roadies got into a knife fight with their guys, so I hated them ever since. Tyler would even refer to Kiss in other interviews as an, I quote, a comic book rock band with sparkle faces and a couple of hits, adding in a separate interview with a Cowhead show, a Kiss lick and a Joe Perry lick, two different worlds. And I sometimes, depending on the time of day, get offended. I hear that and go, it's all right, but do they really mean it? And what's this all about? And that's why I think Aerosmith has been around forever. We really do take ourselves seriously. Years later in the early 2000s, the bands would tour again, it was during an interview Kiss frontman Paul Stanley gave to Rockline's Bob Coburn where he said the following, 
Look, I love Steven and Joe, and Aerosmith is a great band. Maybe Steven's feeling a bit of himself because he's got an album coming out. The reality is in 2003, we did a co-headlining tour and everything was 50-50, but Steven wanted very much and insisted they close the show. I really don't care because as far as I'm concerned, one way or another, you're going to have to come up on stage so you can go on before us or after us. And that being said, he certainly had a chip on his shoulder back then. There was some sort of ambivalence or looking down his nose a bit towards Kiss. So I have to say, seeing him go on after us to play an underwhelmed audience and see people walking out didn't feel too bad. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. We'll see you again. Rock and roll true story sticker.